Logan Paul vs. Dylan Danis has been a regular fixture in the combat sports cycle since its announcement on July 30th. The interest persists despite quality showcases by Terrence Crawford, Justin Gaethje, Canelo Alvarez, Sean O'Malley, and Sean Strickland in the time since. But why do so many people care about the Misfits boxing card taking place at the 21,000 capacity Manchester Arena in Manchester, England on Saturday? The Paul brothers and KSI cast a wide net of interest beyond their beginnings on video platforms like YouTube and Vine. Logan Paul has dazzled as a part-time WWE superstar competing on multiple WrestleManias and headlining a pay-per-view against undisputed world champion Roman Reigns. Jake Paul emerged as a credible celebrity boxer with wins over three mixed martial arts champions and a recent victory against Nate Diaz, one of Conor McGregor's rivals. KSI is a legitimate celebrity in the United Kingdom with 10 top 10 songs and albums that have gone number two and number one. Logan Paul and Jake Paul are technically, I gain loosely speaking, Bashaish professional boxers, but MMA is their real target. It's a unique two-pronged assault with the Paul brothers playing good cop, bad cop with the UFC. Logan Paul and KSI's prime beverage is an official UFC partner. Meanwhile, Jake Paul spars with UFC president Dana White in the media and works with the Professional Fighters League while beating up MMA's heroes in boxing. The Misfits boxing events are not for boxing purists. It's for YouTube fans who want to support their favorite content creators. MMA fans desperate to see the Pauls lose and the morbidly curious. It's a weird pseudo culture event, a public spectacle. But why is Danis here? Influencer versus athlete matchmaking is designed on a fundamental principle, the most reward for the least risk. The Paul brothers prioritize physically smaller opponents with high name value who have almost no boxing experience. The Paul brothers, operating as their own promoters, have the unique responsibility of marketing their opponents as well as themselves. Jake Paul built up wrestler Ben Askren as a multi-time world MMA champion, conveniently excluding his reputation as as possibly the worst striker to achieve a high degree of MMA success. The build to Logan Paul versus Danis took a much uglier tone, but the formula is similar. Danis is a talented Brazilian jiu-jitsu competitor, but he barely qualifies as an MMA fighter. Danis fought twice for Bellator between 2018 and 2019, his only professional action under MMA rules. Danis's name recognition in MMA is not a function of his athletic achievements. His popularity is a response to his friendship with Conor McGregor and public disputes with with fighters like Diaz and Khabib Nurmagomedov. What Paul got right in selecting Danis as his opponent, beyond the skill gap, was Danis' commitment to selling the fight. Danis has done the lion's share of marketing for this fight and is a key reason for persisting interest in subgenre combating staleness. Unfortunately, Danis sold the fight by targeting Logan Paul's fiancée, Nina Agdal. Danis has posted countless photos of Agdal spending quality time with other famous men, some allegedly digitally altered. Danis's fixation with Agdal resonated with fans as evidenced by his enormous social media growth, but it landed him in hot water. Agdal is currently suing Danis for revenge porn, accusing Danis of allegedly posting sexually explicit photographs per CNN. The guy is booing so good at Twitter. It's top tier trolling, which is why I chose him as an opponent. Paul told the flagrant podcast in late August. I had no idea he was going to go this hard, but we got people interested, right? At the end of the day, it's all fight promo. I think he's an excellent troll. I think he's very parasitic, which is why I'm honored that I get to be the one to take him out and embarrass him. That's why I took the fight. I was like, okay, I know this guy is going to promote the F out of it. Danis has repeatedly prodded Logan Paul for allegedly failing to compensate $1.5 million to small investors for his crypto zoo venture. There is also the running joke that Danis, who backed out of a boxing match with KSI earlier this year, will inevitably jump ship. There's even a $100,000 penalty in place should Danis cancel the fight without approval from a doctor chosen by Paul's team. The typical formula of these fights dictates that MMA fans tune in to support their favorite fighter against a brash, cocky social media influencer. But Paul vs. Danis is a unique win-win circumstance for consumers where a knockout in either direction will satisfy. These two men are not well-liked. That is the draw. Any outcome, short of a boring decision, will scratch an awkward itch. Outcome of the fight. The build-up to the fight had been taken up by trash-talking insults, press conferences, conference fights, and flying objects. El Jefe Danis has been relentlessly trolling Paul's fiance Nina Agdal on social media ever since the fight was announced and it eventually spilled over in the final round in a chaotic and controversial ending. Paul, wearing pink shorts, boxed on the outside and at range, while Danis took the center of the ring in a cagey opening round. Paul, 28, then opened up late in the next, unloading with a series of crushing body shots which Danis managed to soak up. Danis threw a couple 
couple of backhand shots before lying flat on the canvas taunting his rival. It had Paul and the crowd frustrated and agitated at what resembled a pantomime rather than a pay-per-view fight. Dennis had never competed in a boxing match before, with his experience instead coming in jiu-jitsu and mixed martial arts. Although he has not fought in MMA in four years and he only has two professional bouts to his name, the 30-year-old was set to fight KSI months ago but withdrew, but he got his crack at Logan Paul, whose only pro fight defeat came against KSI. Paul, who has over 23 million subscribers on his YouTube channel, won easy fourth and fifth rounds with his opponent just looking to avoid the knockout, while Dennis was deducted a point in the final round for trying to wrestle Paul to the ground before the brawl broke out. The official result of the fight is a win for Logan Paul by disqualification. After the fight, Paul described his opponent as a dirty human being, saying, he's supposed to be good at jujitsu. What happened, bro? I stopped the takedown. He tired. He tried to do a guillotine, and I'm sorry I missed that hammer fist. Oh, that would have been good. I'm sorry it ended that way, y'all. Dylan Dennis truly is a coward, a dirty, dirty human being. After the fight, Logan was very happy to win the fight. In the dressing room, he gave a speech, sitting on Jake's shoulder. In the speech, he thanked everyone for striking by him, believing in him, and standing by his side. He also expresses his love to his fiance and said the wedding will be soon. Five days after the fight in WWE, he got a match with the WWE legend Rey Mysterio for the United States Championship. After the fight, you would suspect Logan Paul will go into another controversy, but you would be completely wrong. After the fight, Jack Paul started trending on Twitter. He was accused of taking cocaine in the fight, but latter Jack cleared the allegations in his latest video titled My Response to the Allegations. In his video, he said that he sweets a lot and he has to contest Aintly wipe his face. And when he was wiping his nose, people thought that he was taking drugs. In his video, he also did a funny skit according to the allegations. Jake, what is this clip on? What the f There's coke everywhere. Jake. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I can't do it. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. And if you want to watch more content like this one, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell to know whenever we post a new video. Let me know in the comments your thoughts about this video, and I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, stay strong, bye.